wax poetic about King's Disease 1 and King's Disease 2. And how impressed we were with Nas and the rapping and the production by Hit Boy and all of this. And I think Brian is going to fill me on this. But this shit right here, this project, I don't know, man. I might like this the best. I'm not saying this has the best songs. But I think cohesively, sonically, I love the sound of this. It's very stripped down production. It's very grimy. It works. Nas is spitting as hungry as I've heard him in years, in my opinion. Probably even better rapping than on King's Disease 1 and King's Disease 2. It's short. It's not got not really a great concept. This is one of those like lyrical flexing albums, and I can enjoy these from time to time. And Nas just sounds great on this. They like great. I I I I like if this is I don't even want, I hate saying this because it sounds a bit hyperbolic, but it's like yo, this is what I think a lot of people have wanted from a Nas project in a while, right? In the stripped down nature of it, it's I am not saying this. So I want nobody to twist my words. Be clear with this: the length of it, the amount of tracks, the stripped down nature, and the sound of it gives it a Illmatic esque feel. This is not Illmatic. Please, there are not songs in here that is good as the best songs in Illmatic. It's not that, but it does have a feeling of that hunger. The sonics of it are a little bit similar in in that way, and it's just a really enjoyable listen. I'm not sure we, we're going to get Brian and I are going to get this another time, probably later this year. I'm not sure where I rank this in terms of Nas projects. And I don't think now is the time for this. I think we need to sit with this a little bit more. But it's really good. I really enjoy this. I found myself playing it a lot over and over. I like it. It's nice on the AirPod Pros that I got for Christmas. It's nice in the whip. <laughs> it's, nice when I, it's nice when I'm working out. It, it passes and checks all the boxes in the test B. Yeah. I, I, it, this... This is just a really good project that it just makes me smile. I just really like the hunger from Nas on this. I really like this energy lyrically. And yo, it's undeniable. When he and Hip Boy get together, they're making magic. They're making this magic. And it's good. They're on a run that's incredible right now. The music that they're making is so dope. I'm excited. What you? What do you think, man? I'm just excited. I, I think you hit it out the park and you hit on the key thing being like it checks all the boxes right so the cleaning test that you've outlined here before <laughs> uh which i always refer to now because it's such a great great theory and for people who don't know new listeners because we're probably gonna have some um the cleaning test is basically if you're playing a song does this while you're cleaning your house make you album, want to run across the room say that again i was saying if you're playing an album if you're playing an album, rather, yeah. Does this song make you want to run across the room while you're cleaning, stop what you're doing, and skip the song, right? Or does it not, and will you? are you willing to play it, or do you enjoy right. listening to it? Like, There's also levels of skipping, because there's that. And then it's like, ah, I don't need to go across the room to skip it. Right. I'll just listen to it this one time. Right. But if you if you have your phone in your hand, you probably will still skip it. So, you know, that's still another like variation of that. And then the other thing is the workout uh, sort of uh, box. And this checks the shit out of that. I would say more so than the other two Kings of Seas albums because of what this is sort of uh, stylistically. It's more in your face, boom bap, uh, more straightforward, less of a concept, et cetera, et cetera. There's not a lot of like deep thinking here by comparison to the Kings of Seas one and two albums, one in particular. Right. Um, there doesn't need to be though. Like it, it's an EP. Like it, it's, I think it's great for what it is. If this came out a little bit sooner, it would have been our EP of the year last year for both of us. I'm certain of saying that. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, yeah, for because sure. Because we, we came out with our awards that week, and then Nas was like, Nas and Hitboy were like, you know what? We're going to hit you with an EP on Christmas Eve. Um, and then who was the, the hip-hop website? I don't remember if it was uh, Double XL, Hip Hop DX. I don't remember who it was. We're saying that the the, the album flopped. And oh, it's Hip Hop DX. Hip -hop That's DX. disappointing because I like Hip Hop DX, but... It don't matter because they didn't do that for that. Otherwise, they wouldn't have dropped it on Christmas Eve. They just had some shit. They wanted to drop it. And I think, then here's the thing. I think they also dropped it because, I don't know, Nas, I think, is uh, kind of feeling the things that we've talked about here, Dex, about like Nas fans being slighted on his behalf because you're seeing him being left out of conversations that he should obviously be in. And I think that you hear some of that through this project, and that's my biggest takeaway from it, from Speechless 
down to Meet Joe Black, which is the second song on the album, which is my favorite so far in my several listens front to back. And it's very easy to listen to front to back. Like that's one of the things that jumped out at me at first is the high replay value this all has straight through as a project, which is great. All the way through to dedicated the last song. Like there is a hunger there, as Dexter said. And I, f- I feel maybe I'm wrong, but there's a level of Nas being irritated, being left out of certain conversations, which he does lend voice to on some bars. And feeling like he's not getting the respect he deserves. Now, you could say that's egotistical, uh, but to somebody who feels the same way, probably to a lesser degree, because I'm not fucking Nas. But to, you know, to somebody who feels the same way, this hit me in that particular way, so I really enjoyed this. Like, I've really enjoyed this album a lot. I don't know where I'm going to rank it and, and things of that nature, but, like, I... And I can't even compare it to the first two Kings of Z's projects necessarily because it's in a different sort of vein. This is more in that Lost Tapes vein of what it is and, you know, it being put together differently, et cetera, et cetera. But in terms of repay value, it's very similar because Kings of Z's 1, I was hearing over and over after it came out. Kings of Z's 2, same thing. I'd probably say Kings of Z's 1, maybe slightly more. Kings of Z's 2 had songs that I would play more often. This, I would just play it straight through. I just put on track one and I know in a half hour... Like, this is what I'm going to listen to just straight through. Boom, 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 boom. And I think it, like, it is EP of the year that came out last year. I almost want to rank it for this coming year. I don't know if I'm going to cheat and do that. I might. We'll see. Um, And then. Uh, I'm not. You know what? I'm, I'm not because I'm just going to say, look, we recorded our stuff before, but we can amend things. And if you listen to the last episodes, we know it was the EP last year. Y'all should know it was the EP last year. So, yeah. And it probably also it's- makes my top 10, though. Oh yeah, it would have absolutely been a top ten. <laughs> like, it might. It, it, it's funny. I might actually sit and say, like, it's not. I don't think it's a better project than like Dave, who we both had at number one. But yeah. I think it's like I could argue it's like one of my more enjoyable projects. Yeah. And this is what I like more out of in hip hop. I just I don't know, man. Like I hear you. I'm glad we agree on the hunger. The songs are great. Meet Joe Black's one of my favorites. I love Ugly on this, which is a song that actually has a really good concept around it about just the ugliness of the streets and growing up around the streets that's, that's really good the song with primo uh, with the scratch with A$AP rocky. Wait, A$AP rocky also asap rocky yo nice verse. to hear from him again yeah love it um truth is actually uh r- rising up as one of my favorite songs on this yeah. and as usual i'll say i said this to my boy because it was funny like i went over to one of my boys cribs who's big Nas fan and big we're big Knicks fans. We watching the game together. And I came in, he's bumping, he's bumping the album. So we, you know, chilling in his crib, we were bumping the album. He's like, yo, he's like, ask me some of my favorite joints. And I told him, I said, yo, and he's like, yo, I, he's like, I can never get past speechless. And I said, I told him, I said, we're gonna say this on the podcast. We know this about Nas, and Brian and I always say this. Nas knows how to kick off an album. <laughs> the album of Nas that are really good. When Nas kicks off the album and lets you know what time it is, yeah. you'd be like, ooh, what else is coming next? Yeah. And this speech is another one. This album starts off strong. It's just a good vibe all the way through. And, and, and this seems like this was just Nas just being like, yo, this is some Lucy, you know, sort of underground vibe, stripped down production that I'm just going to give away as an EP. But I just think the thing I think people should come away from this is like, not that I ever subscribed to this. I've never been the person that thinks like because a rapper gets older that they're somehow going to get lyrically worse. I always think you should be lyrically sharper and actually more diverse in what you have to say. I hate people that make that argument because it's fucking stupid. But I think that he is lyrically sharp and pushing himself at the age of 48 and pushing himself to get better, which is what you should see about an artist. And it's great to see this from our legends like him and Jay that are still rapping still doing it at a high level. It shows what hip hop can be and push beyond and what we can see as this dude. Another thing I want to say, 2022, especially after Magic, especially after King's Disease 1 and 2, let's get my man Nas in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I don't really necessarily Ooh. care if it is about all these accomplishments. We all know he's a legend. We all know in my heart he has the greatest rap album of all time with Omatic. This man should have already been in, in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, I just watched Jay-Z and L O Cool J's inductions the other day, which were very good. I wish L O Cool J had went in on his own and Jay Z on his own. I thought they should have been separated from each other so they can get all the flowers at that time. And I hope the same thing happens for Nas. He needs to get in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Good that call. needs to happen. Let's see that happen. Induct him in 2022. It's about time. He also might get his second Grammy 
uh, because the Grammys are kind of coming up, and he's up for album of the year again with King's Disease too. So we'll see uh, if he does that. I I don't I wouldn't be mad if he didn't necessarily. Although I do think his album is the best there. But you know, the off season J Cole is there, and Tyler the Creator's album is also there. So those are really good. Yeah. I wanted to ask uh, because we only th- another thing that you probably like a lot about this EP, knowing you, uh, the lack of guests. Probably, oh, you yeah. know, f- yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I, I just want to hear Nas rap, and I'm getting that. I hear Nas rap, I love it. <laughs> it's I just ASAP it. Rocky who was great, and it, it, kind of like a King's Disease one, right? Where I remember we looked at the track list, and you were like, It feels like there's a lot of guests, but I'm like, If you pay it, if you look though closely, like there are guests, there are multiple guests in some songs. Like there was and a lot one, of just RB hook singing. The one with the fur, singing. like it was minimal, right? So it didn't even when you listen to the album now, you don't feel like it's a fucking, you know, it's him and somebody else every song. Which for this, you could tell it's him, Hit Boy, and then there's one song with ASAP Rocky and DJ Premier. But if you had to pick one artist to have a guest verse, where where who would it be and what song? If you had to pick one, because I was thinking about this as I was listening. Yo. That's really good thought. Because I, I do think this stuff at times, that's a really good question, D. Because I do think this at times with projects. Well, I'm listening to a song long enough, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to hear this on the verse. I'm going to give you one. I, I would love to see, I've long wanted to see Nas. There's a song that I just love on this album that I, there's a couple people I can hear on it. So I'm going to give you two artists here. But I think they'd fit perfectly on the song, and I think they would have delivered great verses. One is a, a younger artist than Nas that I've wanted to see him collaborate for a long time, and that's Kendrick. And I would have liked to have seen Kendrick on Ugly. I think Kendrick would have been fantastic on Ugly. We've seen what Kendrick have done with songs that are focused around one word, where it's fear or feel. I think putting him here would have been good. The other person I would mention for that song would have been Andre 3000. I would have really liked to have seen what he could have done on something like that. I think that could have been really good. There's a song like Meet Joe Black, which I know you love, that I would have liked. That's to where I went first. There's there's a lot of people I could see in that song, but you got to give me a rapper that's going to come with the hunger and aggression on that, that I think could be really good. So there's some names I'm going to throw out for that. One I think is a favorite of yours that I think could work. That's Freddie Gibbs. I think Gibbs could have been oh. nice on that track. I think it would have worked really well. I think Black thought somebody else that could bring the hunger on that, that could work really well. Yeah. Um, so that's, th- those are some of mine that I'll see in the song. But if for my first pick, I would have liked to feature on Ugly, and I'd say Kendrick or Andre 2000. I think Sky Zoo would tear up Ugly. I think he would have. I can see the that. I can see that. I can see that. Sky Zoo is one I thought about, and this one is partially because of the name of the song. But you're gonna see where I'm going with this. Okay. I think Beanie Sigel would have killed the truth. Uh, which is well, toward the that, back part that, of that. that I, I, well, I also like what you did there. I like yeah. the with the truth. I like that. Yeah, I like yeah. that. I, I like that. It's very, very good. I like that. I like that. But I can see him on that. I like that. That would have been, been a nice feature that has meaning in the feature, too. So I like that. I yeah, like that. I think that would have been a nice, just full circle hip hop moment, if you will. Yeah. You could, Woo is for the children. You could obviously, you know, you could go Method, the way, shit, the way Method Man's been rapping lately. I would have loved to hear like, but that, that, album. that's a beat, that's a beat Taylor made for Ghost or Raekwon. Or Ghost or Raekwon. Yeah. That's a beat Taylor made for a good point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, and this is a, this is a little bit more of a layup, but like, I still do want to hear a Nas and Jay song on a Nas or Jay song as opposed to on a DMX album, Rest in Peace, or a DJ Khaled okay. album. I think Jay-Z on Meet Joe Black would be very interesting. I, I, I That's what I Two thought about. Two veterans just showcasing their hunger. And I could Jay sort of like turning back the clock a little bit, rapping a little faster, you know what I'm saying? Because it's a, it's a more upbeat, uh, intense song. I could see Jay like doing his thing on that. Yo, that's, sure. that's a good one. I didn't think about doing this. And I'm going to say something. So my 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 boy, one of my friends, Anthony, the same one I was watching Nick game with, he was talking about this album. He said to me, "Does do I think that this project pushes Jay to make something like this? With this I had this thought also. <laughs> like, is this, is this? Like, and he was saying this in this way that I understood, which was like not about like a, a feudal level, but like, you know, Nas has shown he's been rapping and putting these projects out very consistently in the last two years at a very high level of rapping too. Does this push Jay to be like, yo, I gotta be better than Nas? I'm 30 now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, which is what hip hop should do. And so I'm like, yeah, that'll be dope. Like, I hope that happens.